video I'll be giving five tips on how to perfect your wash and go as you guys know I one of my go-to styles is the wash and go and I have perfected it over the years I want to help you guys out because I know a lot of people still are trying to figure out how to get their wash and go going I already just did like three quarters of my hair and I will start on this side the first thing that you need is a moisture you want to make sure your hair is wet so that your hair is moisturized because water is the main thing that causes your hair to be moisturized. So I'm gonna start on this section. Right, so with water, this water is warm and you wanna use warm water because you wanna open your cuticle so that it can receive all the additional moisture you're gonna put in like your leave-in and your moisturizer and cream and all that. So, and your butter. So I'm gonna start off by moisturizing my hair with warm water. And this water is gonna one open the cuticle because it's warm and two moisturize my hair because it's water along with the moisturizing process you want to also add all your moisturizing um, additional moisturizing products like uh, your leave-in and all of that so you want to do the, the LCO method or the lock method for me the lock method is LCO um, because you the oil so it's liquid cream oil instead of liquid oil cream because the oil is what's going to seal all that moisture in so you want to put that in last you don't want to put the oil in and then put the cream on top your hair's already sealed in it kind of just sits on top of your hair so the l being liquid is the water that i've used and then the cream i like to use miel pom pomegranate and honey twisting souffle this stuff is really really thick and i love thick products um my hair is very not very dense but it's pretty dense and I, um so i want to make sure i use thick thick products to make sure my hair is thoroughly moisturized and it gets all up in the shaft of my hair. My hair is nice and creamy. So this is my C, which is the cream or my moisturizer. After that, I like to put an oil on my hair. Well, as you guys know, I like to use my butter oil mix, which I also sell on Etsy. I will have a link below if you are in my description box if you're interested in purchasing it. It is so thick and it allows my hair to stay moisturized for as long as I want to, basically until my next wash day. So I like to apply this to my scalp because it has really good nutrient properties. And then I add it to the shaft of my hair. Now this will lock in all that moisture that I just put on. Number two in perfecting your wash and go is to thoroughly detangle. A lot of people will just, you know, finger detangle, leave it like this and go and wonder why they have a bird's nest or knots on their next wash day. Now, if you thoroughly det detangle while you're doing your wash and go, your next wash day, you won't have any many tangles to detangle. So what I like to do is I like to start off with my wide tooth comb. And this basically just gets like the bigger kinks out. And then once I do that, I move on up and use my tangle teaser, which gets the little kinks out, the little small ones that you may not be able to get with finger detangle. Tangling, if you wanna use your fingers instead of a wide tooth comb, you can. But I do suggest using a tangle teaser or a demon brush to get the small, thin uh, tangles you might have. It also smooths the hair, which also really helps make your wash and go last longer, not get tangles or not. Number three, choose a styler. My favorite styler is the Kinky Curly Curling Custard. Some people like to use Eco Styler Gel, some people like to use the Wet Line, some people like to do, use home and products, whatever. Some people don't even like to use a styler. If this is just your styler, all right, you're done. But it all depends on your texture. If you have dense hair like me and you need more something to hold that hair down, or if you have a looser texture, finer hair, and you like your hair to be big, but you don't want it to be weighed down, you may not use a gel or you may use a lighter gel. Determine your hair type, determine your texture. If your hair is fine, if your hair is, um, if your hair is thin, if your hair is coarse, your hair is thick, yeah, that will determine what kind of styler you want to use to make sure you can keep your hair. And also too, depending on how you want your hair to look, if you are, have fine hair and you want your big, and you like big hair, you might want to use a lighter gel. But if you have thicker, thicker hair and your natural hair is naturally voluminous and you want more weight down look, you might want to use a thicker gel. So I like um, my hair to be very defined and a little volume i like volume but i don't want it to look frizzy and my hair is naturally frizzy so i like to use a defining gel so i've used the kinky curly curling custard and it's nice and also it's very natural so it doesn't um dry my hair out like i find that equal style gel and gels of that nature will dry my hair out so i like to use a moisturizing gel that also has a really high hold and also to another part of the styling technique is how you choose the style some people like to rake their hair like this and just leave it like that. If your hair is thinner or a looser texture, that might be best for you. 
but for my girls that have like 4, 4A hair, 3C hair, stuff like that, you might want to do the shingling method, which will give you optimal definition and volume and movement. So I will take very thin pieces or pieces that are as big as my curl pattern. I grab a section about this size and then I twirl it at the end, let go. Twirling on the end will allow it to encourage a curl on the end. I don't really have to do it, but I'm just used to doing it. Number four is sectioning. Okay, I notice a lot of people don't do enough sectioning. So this is a probably a medium sized sectioning. So for starters, like when I'm applying my moisturizer and stuff like that, I will probably, this kind of sectioning is probably fine because I can smooth out all my moisturizer throughout this section. But if you have like a coarser texture than me, you might want to do more sections. And of course, if your hair's um, a looser texture than me, you may not need to do as many sections. I know people who do only four sections on their entire head. Well, I do like 12. <laughs> and so don't be afraid to do more sections because a lot of people don't determine how many sections they need and that's the reason why their wash and coat doesn't work. So I'm just applying all my product because this section is fine for applying product for me. You need to determine what how many sections is good for you. All right. But I know that when I get to stop the styling part of my hair, I need to do more sections. So I will split this in half and just work on this size section for when I apply my gel and when I actually do my shingling method because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with a section and you'll end up getting frizz. Oh yeah, if you have thicker, thick hair like me, you might want to do more sections. Trust me, you'll thank me later. For example, a good eye rule of thumb also for applying product is make sure you get your product all over your head another thing i know is a lot of people don't do is they don't they'll apply product like here and then not at their roots like you see how like my roots are white <laughs> and i know a lot of you guys know me for having white roots but this is how i get my wash goes to last long and for my wash goes to look good um the way they do um you have to add the product to roots of your hair a good way to uh, give you an example is like flat ironing for those out there who like to straighten their hair all the time um you wouldn't start your flat iron like right here of course not. Why? Because the roots will be all poofy, right? You start at the root, you tap, 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 and then you go down the whole shaft to make sure your entire shaft of your hair is straight. You do the same thing when applying curly product. You apply it to the root and make sure it's thoroughly on the whole shaft of the hair. And now I'm just going to move on and apply my gel. And this is the perfect section for applying my styler because it's not too large. I can easily shingle with holding this type of section. Wash and go is number five. Let it air dry, let it dry, but do not touch. Some people diffuse and that works for them. For me, I find that causes more frizz. So my hair is very susceptible to frizz. I don't do diffusing. I prefer to air dry, but my hair has gotten longer and has gotten way thicker than ever. So air drying takes like two days. So my suggestion is to use a hooded dryer that has a cool setting so you don't put heat on your hair, which you also put a lot of ventilation up in there so that your hair could dry faster. My hair will dry probably like an hour um, and then I might still have some like roots that are a little damp but it's like it's dry enough for it. I can like go to sleep on it and it's not like soaking wet. So yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be back with my little outro. <laughs>